Welcome to the Powerful One Podcast. This episode is with my boy, Charlie E. Clay. Charlie and I grew up together in the Baltimore area. We actually went to rival high schools. Um, Charlie is an amateur bodybuilder. He is a personal trainer, certified nutrition coach out of the Orange County area. He also is finishing up his degree in kinesiology. And he's working at a supplement nutrition store out there in Orange County where he's located. So guys, awesome episode. Charlie is one of the most dedicated, disciplined people I know. He's a he's a freaking workhorse. And he talks about his journey from the fraternity life, drinking, partying, doing all the stuff, to where he's at now, being super regimen, super disciplined, the bodybuilding lifestyle. He kind of talks about his journey and, and details some of the important things he learned from that and, and his path through that. He talks about ups and downs through his life. He talks about just the mindset and mentality of a bodybuilder versus where he used to be, um, kind of just being, you know, the party fraternity kid. So really, really awesome episode. A lot of great content for it. And enjoy. Cool, bro. Here with Charlie E. Clay, my dude. What's up, bro? How you living in quarantine? You know, I've been doing my best. It's it's been. A, I'm somebody who who thrives on structure and routine and doing the same thing every day. So it, it I took a hit a little bit. Um, not gonna lie, there there was points where I was a little bit down just because you know I I think every a lot of people can relate. Just kind of like a lack of purpose. You know, um, yeah. I did get laid off from my side job. I work at a nutrition store, and uh, then also being a personal trainer and like you know, the deal with gyms being closed down. So can't train any clients, but uh been trying to stay busy, man. Uh, still able to train myself, have access to a facility. So that's been going well, just trying to stay on that and my diet and then just taking advantage of this free time, get a little bit of rest. I yeah. mean, take care of stuff that I haven't really been able to take care of. Good, man. I'm glad you're seeing the positives from it. Um, and I'm glad you're able to train because that's something I was wondering for a while. I was like, I feel like he's he somehow made it work, but I was curious, like if you had access to a gym or not. So and you know, it's, it's how it's how bad you want it, I guess. I mean, you, you can make it work yeah. a million different ways. I've like I'm living with my coach here, he's coming up with all kinds of crazy workout videos, resistance bands, um, just to imitate the movements that we do in the gym, but you know, right in the comfort of your home. So you know, there if there's a will, there's a way. You got a set of dumbbells, whatever, but yeah, yeah I'm very, very grateful to uh, have been able to have access to a full gym. I mean, it's the same gym that I train at, yeah. that I have trained at up to this point. And so, I mean, my, like everything else kind of, I don't know, it, it's your mindset, man. Cause I, I, I it, it is a point where I don't have all this other stuff going on. So I do have a chance to, to zone in and focus yeah. specifically on training and nutrition. If you want to put it that way, I just, I can't stand that I can't work right now. That's all. Right. right. So, so did you guys, um, for your other job, so for not training people, but for, uh, the, it's a supple, it's a nutrition store, right? Yeah. Yeah. So did you guys, have you guys been open the whole time for that? So nutrition and supplement store, uh, it is, it is, it has been open. Um, I actually being one of the newer employees, there was only three of us, um, the store manager who hired me and then, uh, my coworker. But uh, being the newest man on, like, you know, seniority, whatever. So I, I got put on temporary furlough. So I will get my job back there. I believe some point in May, like a little letter that uh, May 31st, I believe, is when I should be hearing back from them. So I don't know, man. Everything happens for a reason. Like, yeah. if I do end up back there, then cool. Um, I've been taking advantage of unemployment for, for the moment. And oh, yeah. I don't even really know how that works, but money's showing up in my account, so <laughs> that's cool. Um, and, and yeah, just t- taking this chance to to really try and grow and focus and zone in on the things that I need to do, such as uh, you know growing my online training and yeah, um, just reaching out to new clients, whatever. And I've really, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna be transparent. I've lacked with that a little bit. I, I definitely got a little bit comfortable um, the past couple weeks at the very beginning of quarantine, but. It, kind of coming out of that haze now and reconnecting with old potential clients and uh, just trying to get things running, man. That's good, man. There's really like, like you said, you know, like you can find a way, man, there's, you can still make moves. So I'm glad that you're at least, you know, if other stuff isn't going on, you're really dialed in on, on the stuff that you can be. Exactly. What's out of your control, you can't help, but the things that are in our control, you know, run that into the ground, bro. 
Yeah, man. And I, I figured you were doing all right with that just because I remember when I came and stayed with you, just your routine, like you're very, like you said, routine regimented, like you thrive off of like having that structure and, and it made me like, like have that structure. So like staying with you made my, like me on top of my shit. Um, so I figured you, you were doing well and making the most of it. So, I mean, what is, uh, you know, what's life like for the quarantine? Like walk me through like a day, um, nowadays. Cause I, and then versus, you know, not in quarantine, just like a normal regular day for you. It's the life of just bodybuilding, dude. Because when I was there, man, it's it's a, it's an all day, every day grind, bro. Absolutely, it's twenty four, three sixty five. I mean, that's for the ones that really live the lifestyle, and you know, you know my backstory, and have known me for a really long time, and we've talked about this plenty. But uh, just coming from that into this, it's you know I live and die by that routine, like I said, um, and you know I I say that. I've lo- like a lot of things have changed, but at the same time, like I stick to the basics. I stick to what I know. And so I have developed somewhat of a routine. Like it's funny, man, when I get going, it's, I eat almost identically, like not even on the hour, but the, but the minute. <laughs> so I'm like eating my meals around the same time every day. Um, still going to train. It's been midday usually. So I'm not having to go to school now that being moved online right. and then I'm not having any, really other commitments for clients or even shifts at the store. I've just been uh, at the house, man, working. So, I mean, a typical day during quarantine, I'd probably say wake up, been taking a lot of morning walks. I've been utilizing that and going outside. Um, So wake up every day around, around 645, seven. I wasn't always that way in quarantine, but past like two weeks, I've been trying to wake up a little bit earlier. Um, before that was like 8.39. I mean, I can't sleep in past 8.30. I start getting anxious in my bed. Like, <laughs> thinking, you know, I got, I got shit to do. I got, I got food to eat. But uh, it's a typical day for quarantine. It's been like wake up around 6.45, 7, go out, take a 20-minute walk just around here in Costa Mesa, uh, right by my house. And just, I got this classic, like, same thing every day, same loop, um, about 20 minutes, just – you know, throw the sweatshirt on, listen to some music, a podcast, whatever, and get my steps in. It's just a good way to start the day, um, get some good cardio, and then I head back to the house, eat my first meal, or make a shake if I don't want to eat it. I'll just blend all my stuff together. I mean, eggs, eggs, egg whites, oatmeal, <laughs> just straight down the hatch. Uh, I've been trying to eat that recently. My coach told me I got to stop drinking egg whites, so... Um, <laughs> that's my first meal and then just kind of prepare my food for that day since I do have this time it's I usually have my food prep the night before but through this it's like I'm just kind of being cooking right after I finish that meal so I eat breakfast usually prepare my food for the day um do whatever online assignments I might have that are due that week I still have a couple of classes that I'm working on to towards my associate's degree in kinesiology so just do some work get on, get on the computer head to the gym probably around 1 30 you know make my my pre-workout entry drinks whatever and head on over there um usually get back probably around 2 30 3 o'clock and shower up uh sometimes i'll go for another walk in the afternoon and been taking advantage of netflix a little bit um, yeah you got to man you gotta mix it up <laughs> but i've been trying to keep it educational like i like a lot of documentaries so there's been some good ones. Uh, like I, I want to watch the Michael Jordan one. I just heard about that. Yeah. So yeah, not nothing crazy past like three thirty, four o'clock, man. I mean, I've been trying to just stay busier, but at the same time, it's like you can only be so busy. Like we talked about. I mean, what what's in your control? And yeah, you know, been reconnecting with friends, uh, just FaceTiming my family a lot more than I probably would. Um, on a crazy day and then also you know being on the east coast there's that three hour time difference so get a lot more communication with them some facetimes in and yeah other than that man just kind of using this time to to research uh there's some podcasts that i listen to some of my favorite bodybuilders and uh, just being here living with my coach now it's uh it's been an opportunity just to to pick his brain a little bit and you know like school everything i'm studying in school is counteraction is right there with with bodybuilding with what i'm trying to do professionally so it all kind of works together and just try to learn something new every day yeah man dude i love that it, it's so crazy because like when i think of you now 
obviously like you're easily one of the most, if not the most disciplined person I know. And you've got this routine and you you're like, you don't budge for it. I mean, I even remember like when you were going to work, like you take your meals, like there's, there's really no, it, it's just, it's just one of those things. Like we woke up at like six 30 and hit our, you know, fasted like stair master 30 minutes. So it's just like, it, it's a crazy, it's a crazy lifestyle. It takes it's just such a, a, an absurd level of dedication. Um, but it's crazy. I mean, we'll backtrack a little bit, just talk, talk a little bit about what life was like before you kind of found your passion for bodybuilding before you became disciplined. And I know we've talked about it before, but you know, for some people listening, they, they might know you as like the really disciplined, um, just driven grind, like go getter person. And then there's other people who have probably haven't seen you in a while. You know, some of our old friends who probably Absolutely. just remember who you were before. So go ahead and talk a little bit if you, if you don't mind just about the, the change um, the, the, this huge life change. Cause it's literally like a complete 180. just, you know? Yeah, bro. Absolutely. It's, uh, yeah, it's been a crazy, I mean, you know, as you and I have talked about a couple of times over and then when you came in and saw me here, I mean, it's been, it has been a 180. I mean, even go ahead and call it a 360. It was like, I was reborn a new person. Um, literally, man. yeah. So I, I, uh, after so you yeah, obviously went, we went to rival private schools and then you moved over to Delaney but same Baltimore County Maryland um, grew up athlete like for you know for the most part as, as much as people are in in Baltimore County like I thought I was going to be a lacrosse kid I right. mean I was to a certain extent until that ended you know junior senior year high school I just I actually got cut from the varsity team that was probably my first taste of, of like heartbreak and, and failure that uh that and you know just a party kid man I just you and I relate a lot on that and then reading the uh just the background you sent me about the podcast like I really like that bio that you put because I, I fucking relate to that identically man I know man it, it's so crazy because we have like like real like I relate to your story a lot like yours is they're different, but, but a lot of like the, the, the background and stuff is similar just because of the way we grew up and, and just com like what we're doing now is just so different. So that's where it's, you know, really yes. similar, you know, uh, Baltimore is a very, how do I put it? I mean, almost conformist type, uh, growing up, going to private school there. It's, it's very predictable. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, you know, everyone, grows up, plays lacrosse, you know, go marry a St. Paul's girls chick and, and has, has a kid <laughs> and sends them to the same schools. And yeah. it's just a cycle over and over again. Um, there's not a lot of people that really dare to be different. It's, uh, you know, like you said in your little bio, it's, you know, high school, go through that. You know, a lot of our friends and um, associates grew up and, and went to go play lacrosse in college or football, whatever their respective sport, uh, D1. You know, a lot of D1 lacrosse kids or just Division three schools even. And then that, I always thought that was going to be my route too. And it uh, then I just had – like junior, senior year is probably when I, – I never really knew who I was. Hmm. I maybe thought that I did or had an idea. And I, I was. I was a chameleon. I, I liked – I had true friends and then I had people that I kind of – surrounded myself with because that's what I thought I was supposed to be doing right. or what was maybe cool or just what everyone else was doing like I just wanted to be in the mix and um, I learned real quickly and that was the same story leading into college I, so I ended up going to Ole Miss University of Mississippi um, I picked my college uh, uh, based off the fraternity I wanted to join um, so that tells you enough about what I thought about education um, and, and to be fair, like, that's, that's what most, you know, that's like the system that's set up. It's really like, you know, where we're from, it's, it's very much like private school. Then you pick your college either based on lacrosse, you know, or a sport or what fraternity. So to be fair, it's just like, until you know any different, like you're running that rat race just because yeah. it's, it's all people, it's all that there really is that you know it, you know? So sorry to cut you off, but I just think that's something for people to understand that like, that's like how we went about like that's just like what it was all we do you know it's uh you know you go to the tailgates on the weekends and uh, head to the, the lacrosse games on friday nights and it's you know we we're drinking in the same five people's parents houses on the weekends and 
it just over and over and over again. But yeah, going into college, I mean, same kind of story. College, I, I thought I found my way a little bit. I'm like, oh, I made it. Like, I'm out of Baltimore. Um, like, lacrosse doesn't run life anymore. Like, I, I learned, like, because lacrosse was life, like, that is life or death in, in Maryland. And that's, you know, I played club lacrosse. I, I lived that lifestyle up, and, and I was obsessed with that, too, to an extent. And mm -hmm. really thought that's what I was going to do. Um, that's just kind of, you know, our high school that that was like I keep saying life or death so um heading into college and it was like a, nobody even knew what the fuck lacrosse was in Mississippi or right. in my fraternity that I ended up joining and um it just but the same kind of story but obviously elevated it's like yeah you know, the Baltimore private schools there's there's a lot of uh privilege and there's a lot of drugs you know at a young age if you want to become involved in that or whatever so I mean I definitely partook in that a little bit or not a little bit a, a good amount in high school probably more than the average kid smoked a lot of pot and heading into college that just you know that ramped up tenfold I mean you join a fraternity that's like <laughs> yeah it's I don't know I, I can't speak for other college campuses but Ole Miss was crazy um and my fraternity was very into drugs um and just the party scene, the obsessed with the party scene, you know, you are who you surround yourself with. Yeah. I'm a firm believer in that. And I surrounded myself with who I thought were, you know, and they still are really like, my best friends. I mean, some of them in high school, obviously, but leading into college, like my fraternity brothers, I, I was heartbroken to leave that, that situation. But I, I found out, you know, further along the way that it just, that's not what was in the cards for me and yeah. not how, I was going to fulfill my potential and I didn't even know what it was to that point. Um, but it just wasn't a good situation for me. And, um, yeah, I actually ended up, like, as you know, and just for everybody else that that's listening, I'm, I'm an open book. So like we said, I mean, Tommy asked me if there's anything I didn't want to talk about at the beginning of this. It's like, no, I got a story to tell. And, yeah. um, so I did, I, I went through the, the rehab process. That's, uh, after I got initiated in my fraternity. So I spent about a year and a half at Ole Miss. I was there. I went down early um, that summer, stayed with some older dudes, like friends of mine that – or one friend of mine from Baltimore that introduced me to his buddies that I stayed with uh, for my summer class, like early August. I think I got there right around my birthday, like my 18th or 19th, 19th birthday, I believe, when I went down to school. And so I went down early, knew right away what fraternity I was going to join, uh, did that whole thing, rush, and, and then going out, meeting the girls, whatever, and um, friendship was awesome for me. That was actually, that was the most disciplined, I, I was a great, you know, whoever's familiar with the fraternity process, like, that yeah. was big in the South, and um, I, I, I did. I went hard with that too. I was a disciplined pledge, so um, that was the best structure I had. With like my grades were good. I mean, and that's that's everything was good. My my grades were great even when I was you know not at my best mentally. So I, I was always. That's why I was such a surprise to a lot of people is because I always got and in high school too. I mean, I was a great student, AP right. student in, in English, and always got by. Always made good grades, um, and. Like, that was the thing my parents were so surprised about is how I could function the way I did and and then, like, almost live in this life, this secret life on closed doors. And so that was the story leading to college. Um, yeah, I, I'm losing my track. I got, so I got initiated okay. to, my, to my fraternity. Then that spring was when the craziness started. I mean, spring party, spring break in Florida. Like, heading into that summer, I developed some really bad habits. And... Um, I stayed, I convinced my parents to let me stay for the summer, so I didn't even go home um, after everyone left. Like, the way I explained it, everyone left, you know, in the spring, went home, lived with their family, or went to work a job, went on vacations. Me and my couple of friends down there that stayed just, you know, continued. We continued to escalate. We continued to party, but the difference was we, it wasn't almost as acceptable anymore because we were doing it by ourselves. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so, I mean, 
I don't need to get into the details of all of that, but just bad, bad things, uh, drugs, got arrested a couple of times. I mean, public drunks, just stupid stuff. And um, heading into the fall, when I was getting ready to live in the paternity house, like I had the biggest room in the house, uh, like going to live with one of my best friends. And um, my, my friends were worried about me. And I, I knew that up to a point. Um, they didn't know how serious it was. And I was kind of just in my own world to an extent. Um, just abusing, like Xanax specifically, was what I struggled with a lot. Um, and so long story short, that I ended up leaving Ole Miss. A couple of my friends and my, ended up being my fraternity president were just concerned with the way I was acting and the behavior. And I almost was a liability, really, to, to my fraternity. And um, they, they knew me to the core. They knew who I was. And they knew this, this wasn't who I was – like they thought I was going to become, I mean, I was the, I was the president of my pledge class. I was uh, well respected by, you know, everybody, the older guys, my pledge class. And it was like, I ended up being that kid, like that we always talked about during pledge ship. Yeah. You didn't want to be. And um, yeah, so I just, they ended up calling my parents and uh, my parents pulled me out. And that's when I entered. Um, a detox facility in Southern Maryland, and I ended up leaving Ole Miss. Uh, my parents put me in a detox facility, and then they were like, weren't really sure what we wanted to do. But my parents, you know, being who they are, always took really good care of me and wanted the best for me, and still do. And I want to be where I'm at right now without their support and their help, and yeah. just really their unconditional love. Um, and so I ended up going to inpatient rehab in Utah um so that was like my first time on the west coast or even really past Texas like I, I'm an east coast kid uh grew up in Maryland that's really all I knew went to school in Mississippi and you know been up and down to vacation in Florida and up and down the east coast whatever Georgia and uh then I was in a completely new world bro I moved to Utah I was not really moved there I was in a facility there and on lockdown but uh and I was still really not accepting the process at that point. Um, I was so obsessed with getting back to school, you know, keeping up with my old friends. Like, like I, I ended up signing a lease to a point. Like, that's how focused I was on getting back to Mississippi and, and getting back to my, what now is my old life, I guess you could say. And uh, somewhere along that process, I found out that wasn't in the cards. That wasn't for me. So, um speed through that because I could talk about that all day but it was in Utah spent a couple months there um and then that's what ended up being the bridge that gave me the opportunity to enter sober living and um a couple different areas so I ended up uh picking a sober living I had like three areas that I used that um the guy at the center in Utah helped set me up with and I don't even remember the other ones, honestly, but I, I remember Southern California, obviously. Um, and I wasn't even that excited about it, man. It was funny. I was, I was like, oh, going, like I was just bummed to be in this yeah. process. Like I wanted to get back. To, I just wanted to get back to the party, you know, and with my friends. And you know, I was supposed to be living in the fraternity house that year. That was like the the pinnacle of college. That's like what I thought that I worked up to that point for freshman year and I, it was all hyped up and it's like I, I did myself out early by going too hard or whatever but um yeah so ended up picking Southern California my parents were super excited about that um they actually always egged me on to to look at schools in California um even from the get when I was getting ready to graduate BL and they, my mom, uh, the company she works for, for real estate, Redfin, they, they actually have, uh, or their headquarters was out here at one point in San Diego. So my mom would visit here all the time and she would always come back and say, Charlie, you need to go to school in California. You need to go to school in California. And I was like, whatever, you know, I want, I'm, I want to go down South. I want to be at the football school, like whatever. And, uh, so yeah, ended up in California. Um, and I didn't really know what I wanted to do. <laughs> I had no idea. I just was kind of going with it at this point. I mean, I still kind of had in my head that I was going to be back in Mississippi. Right. But I was just kind of going along with the process. Like, there was a couple guys that I 
clicked with that, you know, we were a bit similar. I met a lot of different characters, different kinds of people throughout that process, a lot that were very, very different from myself. And I never really thought that this was the place I was supposed to be. And it really wasn't. I'm, I'm, I'm a good kid that made some bad choices and, you know, got involved in some bad habits surrounded by people that weren't bringing me up. And, you know, like we, that, those were behaviors that led all the way back to high school and right. just um, not really knowing who, who I was at the core. And mm -hmm. so um, I entered a sober living in California and that's where I really started to wake up. Um, met some good dudes. Um, and yeah, that's kind of, so I, training, I mean, lifting, that, I, I ended up getting into that in Utah a little bit. It's like the only time we could leave the facility was to go to the gym. They, they did a Barnes and Noble trip to the bookstore and they did a uh, gym trip. So I was like, I need to get the fuck out of this place. Like, I didn't really want to go to the gym at first. And I was like, okay, the, the guys that I got along with were going to the gym. And I didn't even really go with them at first, but ended up coming around to that. And I don't know, I just found it was a challenge. It was something that challenged me. Um, and it became so much more than that eventually, which we'll obviously get into. But well, that's where I, I started messing around. I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> in, in rehab, I ate so much that I was lifting and I was just gaining weight. I mean, I was, I've always been like somewhat of a big kid. Right. And then just actually exercising because, I mean, you know, I played football and lacrosse in high school, but I never took the weight room too seriously. Right. I mean, I went in and did workouts. I actually did the Jay Dyer programming, if you remember that. Yeah, yeah, Jay yeah. Dyer. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did that for a little bit. Um, but never, never really got into like actual weight training or mm -hmm. trying to progress like a form of progression and had an, absolutely no idea what nutrition was. That's crazy. Um, so got into that. Uh, December of 2017 is when I really like started to actually go to the gym like somewhat consistently. But I wouldn't consider like my actual training or bodybuilding starting until that summer. So that summer, um, Fast forward, like, so sober living, I was just, I was right there in the corner in Costa Mesa, like about 20 minutes from where I'm at right now. And uh, in a sober living, basically, it's like you're living on your own, in a sense. You're grouped in with, you know, three, four other guys that are paying to be there. And there's a house manager, whatever. They uh, go drug test you a couple times a week and you have a curfew. So you have to be in by a certain time, like no girls in the house, stuff like that, basic stuff. But for the most part, you're living on your own. I didn't even really know how to cook up to that point, bro. I mean, I, I barely knew how to operate a frying pan. Um, you know, because before that, I had, I lived in a fraternity house right before that, before I went into rehab. Rehab, there was a five-star chef. And before that, I was living in my parents' house. Yeah. And I was eating takeout. I was eating Chick-fil-A half the time. And I uh, had no idea how to cook for myself. Like we would sit down for family dinner, but my mom always did that. So I, did, I had no idea how to cook. And uh, that's obviously very important um, in, the, in the sport of bodybuilding. You need to <laughs> know how to cook so you can actually eat the food that, you know, in turn helps you progress. And um, so I was just in California. I was in an in unfamiliar place. Didn't know a soul other than like the the random couple of guys I met there in, in that process. And it, it's a completely different culture, man, out here compared to where we grew up. It's, it's a shock. I mean, going down to school in the South of the shop was a shock, but moving out here was, it's a whole different world. Yeah, man. Talk about like having to like mature fast. I mean, like you talk about like a dude who, you know, the private school life. So you're really like, I mean, we were coddled and then, you know, not even knowing how to cook. And like, all of a sudden you're out on your own and freaking the West coast, you've never been there before. Like, yeah, I had to grow up real quick and that's what yeah. I was going to get into. So, I mean, um, I was 20 years old by that point. I was going to turn, I was set to turn 21 that summer. And that was a, a, a something I really struggled with. Okay. I'm, I'm in sober living, but I have yet to turn 21. And right. Right. Um, and so, uh, I was, yeah, I was stranded. I mean, I, not stranded, but I didn't have a car. I, I, my parents helped me get a bike. I had a red beach cruiser that I would ride to the gym at like 
half the time I walked, but I would walk to the grocery store because it was too hard to carry groceries on my bike. I mean, I was in the sober living spot and the grocery store is like four miles this way and the gym is four miles this way. So most of my days, like at the very beginning of this was centered around getting to the gym and maybe taking a trip to the grocery store and, you know, trying to to carry five bags in both of my arms on, on the way back four miles down the street to, to my sober living. Or if I was lucky enough, like one of my two friends or I wouldn't even really call them friends, like just people that I knew in the sober living, like were nice enough to give me a ride. Like, and that was once in a blue moon. But uh, yeah, just kind of define my own way, especially with this lifestyle. Um, which just most of my day, I, I would go, I would wake up. I mean, I wasn't waking up early at that point. I was just kind of getting into a routine. And um, so I would go to the gym somewhere that day and just kind of, I, I knew the basis of what I was doing at that point. Like I didn't know exactly what worked for me, but I knew how to eat somewhat cleaner. And right, so right. I, would, I was eating way too much at that point. I was like cooking chicken and eating a breast and a half in, in one sitting when uh, I, I found out later along with the help of my coach that that's not what to do at all. <laughs> so so when did you really like uh, fall in love with the process or when did you like what was that like spark for you where you're like man like this is now not you know because it seemed like at first it was almost like there's really nothing else to do it's like you either go to the gym during your free time or go read a book and so you gravitated more toward the gym. But at what point did it click for you? And you're like, man, like now like you wanted to get up every day and like go to the gym and like learn more. And just like that hunger for wanting to progress and wanting to learn more and stuff like that. So um, up to that point, like I explained, I, I began lifting when I was in treatment in Utah. And then I still like to go to the gym, but I wouldn't call myself a bodybuilder. And right. so I, that's like, that I don't know I woke up one day I was like you know I'm getting pretty good at this like I'm putting on some size like or I thought I looked pretty good I looked like <laughs> shit at the time but I gained a lot of muscle compared to what I was before I mean going into rehab I was like sickly like 170 pounds on a Xanax and McDonald's diet yeah and uh I'm, that side by side's crazy like the first time I actually got in shape um yeah so I I started watching like um my parents would come visit and my mom took me to, I like actually got into reading books a little bit. Like that was something that I didn't, did in treatment because we literally didn't watch TV. I read like 13 books when I was in Utah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I had other options. Yeah. Yeah. But, I, and then, so I still kind of continued, I want to get back into it. And that's something that I've tried to do that during this quarantine, but so I got, and it's in my closet right now. It's like, it's almost a mural at this point. It's like not even really a book, but I, I got the, uh, it's called the Encyclopedia of Bodybuilding. And uh, that's, I just saw in the store, it's like, it's by Arnold Schwarzenegger. And uh, I was like, I just want to get this. Like I was talking to my mom, I'm like, this is interesting. It's like, this will keep me busy. My mom bought it for me. And I started looking at that book a little bit. Like there was a couple of documentaries on Netflix at the time about bodybuilding. And I just was, I never really, like I watched that. I just, because that was something I did a lot of in sober living was just Netflix. I've been watching a million shows. But, you know, I started getting into documentaries and I'm like, I like going to the gym so much. I always knew who Arnold was obviously and, and what bodybuilding was, but I never saw myself, you know, going towards something like that. And even like sitting there watching, like being a little farther into lifting, I'm like, I don't think I'd ever want to look like that. Um, <laughs> and, uh, I just, I ended up meeting this guy, this older dude at a 24 hour fitness here in SoCal. And he just came up to me at the gym one day. I was training, you know, like stringer on whatever. Um, and big chubby kid, but like big old shoulders and, and wide back. And he, he comes up to me, he's like, dude, are you a bodybuilder? Or have you ever thought about bodybuilding? I'm like, no, I, I mean, I know what it is, but and so that guy kind of, he like almost took me under his wing in a sense. And he really kind of taught me. I mean, he, he didn't know much to be honest with you, but he knew, he knew work at, or he just knew how to work certain muscles, isolate muscles. And so he kind of helped me find my way a little bit like with my first training split. Like yeah. actually, you know, I had 
I always did what I liked in the gym. I mean, I, I, I went to the chest stuff, like chest press machines and did like the lateral raise machine for my shoulders. And I would just kind of do the same shit every time. It was just, it was something to exert stress or just go throw some stuff around. And uh, I never really like was specific with it. So that's when I started to like break my stuff up and, and become more specific with my training. And so like I started to train my legs. I never trained my legs before. And, <laughs> um, like isolating my arms and a uh, specific back that splitting up chest, shoulders, whatever. And that's kind of when I started to get like obsessed with it. But still to that point, I didn't really know where I was headed. And then one day I really, I just woke up. I'm like, I want to do this shit. Like, I, I want to be a bodybuilder. Yeah. And I was willing to do whatever that took. And that's where I really got serious with it, where, okay, I'm going to go to the store these days. I'm going to train this on this day, this day, this day, rest this day. And so I was kind of finding my way, but um, I was kind of doing this on my own, like, and no measurable way to progress but you know i put on size i was put on muscle and i can send you a picture of like what i was able to achieve by myself right um and that's you know i believe everything happens for a reason and that i like three four months into that where i kind of made that mental decision like this is what i'm going to do <clears throat> that guy that introduced me to just the idea of bodybuilding itself like me actually doing it you know he wasn't a competition prep coach by any means but he like lit that spark in me a little bit like kind of made me realize like oh shit i can do this i got potential for it and he actually moved away and so i was like oh shit like i don't know i'm just gonna train like figure this other stuff out like i'm going to school at that point and i'm you know i'm, I'm like i'm I talked to my dad about it. I'm like, I want to go find a coach. Like, I want to find a real coach. And I didn't even really know what that looked like. Or I didn't even have a fitness Instagram by that point. I had no <laughs> idea what the industry was. And I was just a big kid that liked to lift. And um, that's when I met my coach. I stumbled upon his page on Instagram. And, Damn. like, with my personal page, still, like, with all my fucking paternity pictures, <laughs> and I hit this guy up. And... Um, ended up becoming my my biggest mentor and inspiration. And fast forward two years later, I'm I'm living in his house. <laughs> Dude, that shit's crazy. It's uh, it's interesting for me. Like even hearing it, you know, I know a lot of it because you know we're obviously close friends. But um, it, it sounds like one of the things that's interesting is like you always have had discipline. Like like it sounds you know like back in lacrosse, like you were disciplined. Um, with lacrosse and then like even if it wasn't the right like you weren't putting your energy into the right things it sounds like you always kind of had that di like underlying discipline like that, yeah, I, I, like that idea that sorry go ahead i said no so i didn't mean to cut you off either i, I recognize that too I've, I've in the that roots back to just who i am at the core as a person i guess i'm, yeah. I'm very like i'm first off i'm very very ocd but i'm, I'm a perfectionist i'm, I'm yeah. hard on myself um and whatever I'm doing, I do 100%. So that's kind of been the theme my whole life. And so when I thought lacrosse is what I was going to do, I was going hard in that. I was, you know, because I knew shit was going to hit the fan. I mean, I prepared for that. And, you know, being at one of the most competitive lacrosse schools in the country in a, in a grade with, you know, one of my best friends at the time in, in high school was – a goalie as well and then me entering in the eighth grade another one of our um one of our friends and I, I went into the eighth grade and i knew it was going to be competitive um and you know it's boys Island, it's the pinnacle of lacrosse like that's so being in a grade with three goalies that's everyone kind of, that was like the talk of the lacrosse team for a little bit like in eighth grade like oh shit we got three goalies or like we actually had four at the time there was four of us and a couple um one of them ended up playing another position and i actually did as well um that eighth grade year but then heading into high school i'm like okay i'm gonna take this seriously because i i do i want to i want to do this i want to go to college for it i want to be a part of the varsity team like i want to do this i want to be um you know, on the prestigious boys line varsity lacrosse team. Right. And um, I hired a goalie coach. Like, I was I was preparing. I was doing all the right things heading into varsity tryouts. And I really played my ass off in those tryouts. And 
a lot of people were like, damn, like they noticed, they, they saw the improvement and you know, really thought that I was going to be on that team. And when I did um, have that kind of just heartbreak from, because I, I, I don't know, I didn't feel like it was supposed to be that way. It felt yeah. unfair. And that was like my first taste of failure, like we said, but I was going 100% with that. And, um, you know, going into college, I mean, I was going 100% with partying. Like I exactly. was happy. Like, and, that, and that's the yeah, same idea. Whatever, whatever I was doing, I, I went 100%. Yeah. And I wanted to be the best at it. So, like, and it wasn't always channeled the right way. It wasn't right. channeled into the positive thing. So, I wanted to be the guy that did the most. Like, you know, when I was partying, I wanted, like, I was, it, it was ego driven, man. And I wanted to be the one that drank the most. I wanted to yeah. be that guy that, you know, like, hit him up, whatever. But, uh, yeah, then, so I definitely agree with that. I, I've always had kind of that underlying discipline and it's just obsession, like yeah, really compulsive, just whatever I'm doing, it's, I'm zoned in on that. So finally, when I've had an opportunity to channel that in a positive way and I, and I found bodybuilding, it's like, it was a no brainer. Yeah. It's one of those things that, that always interests me because, you know, when we're growing up, it's like, and I've talked about this on other podcasts, but it's super important. And it's one of the things that gets me like fired up, like passionately the most. And, um, you know, like something like that, like, it, you know, being where we're from, like no one would look at that and be like, man, Charlie, like you're really disciplined, like, or, or, and kind of like take that part and say like, where can you like channel that? that that's like a good outlet. And that's the thing that, that I always try to like pinpoint is when somebody's, uh, you know, maybe they're talking about like their life story. I'm always trying to like find something in there that's like, a, you know, a really good trait that no one really told you you had. Like no one ever, you know, no one ever tells you when you're younger. It's like, if you're not good at math and science, like you're basically nothing. But no one's ever like, hey, man, you're like, you're really disciplined. Like you should, you know, you that that's like a really cool thing. And so that's why, you know, me seeing it now, it's one of those things that I wish people would do more of that. It is really like value a lot of the things that are super important and a lot of the things that that people have that are really good rather than just like being good at school or being good at lacrosse or something like that you know and so that's why yeah that's why it's just cool for me to 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 see that and and now have you channel into something that you're so passionate about it's one of those things like it was like that underlying thing was always there but no one you know no one tells you that you know no one tells you man like you're really disciplined um or, or, or whatever the case is you know what i mean Totally. You know, you're wrapped up in your own thing. I mean, everyone, it's like high school, man. You're trying to find yourself. That's like yeah. the, most, I'd say the most confusing time. Um, everyone's trying to figure themselves out. And there's a lot of judgment. Um, a lot of ego. Yeah. You know, grew up around a lot of ego, a lot of privilege, like we've said. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting to look back and identify those patterns of behavior where like, okay, I've, I've kind of always had this inside of me to an extent and it's yeah. now I'm really starting to unfold. And as I get deeper into myself and figuring out who, who the fuck I am, it's, yeah. it's just an interesting process, man. It's you, you, you do. I like, I do that too. And especially when I was going through like just almost like the rebirth of, of who I was becoming, it's, you look back on those things and it's, it's an aha moment for sure. And I remember like, we've talked about this before, but it's, it's almost like, you know, back then we're so worried about like, what does so-and-so think of me and like pleasing Absolutely. other people. And, and so, yeah. So I, I wanted to talk about that a little bit and just um, the, the real change between that back then, like caring a lot about what other people think and trying to please people versus like where you're at now with that whole mindset of that. If you want to talk about that a little bit. Absolutely, man. Um, it's like exactly these are all it's funny it's like you read my mind and <laughs> you channel off each other but this yeah, is man, yeah all this stuff that i wrote down when you originally sent me the the podcast stuff so um yeah i mean it's it really comes down to being yourself I and mean, it's like i i have figured out who i am and i like there are certain parts of you know if you want to call it my past life that I still hold on to or you know the, the the general just makeup of who you are it's you don't lose that in, in becoming who you're going to become it's it's finding and, and kind of meshing that all together so um for me it's it, and I still need to remind myself of this every day and 
it's actually a reason that I can become inconsistent sometimes with social media. And that's something I'm really trying to, to attack. And it's like, I like doing something like this, even like I've talked about, it's like stepping out of your comfort zone. I fucking hate talking in front of a camera. Um, and it just comes down to being yourself, not really caring what people think about you and, and not doing it for approval, but rather just loving what you do and becoming obsessed with that. I mean, you can't fake passion. So yeah. if you're passionate about something, it, it just comes out like, like you and I are talking right now. It just, it happens organically. And I mean, I could talk about it for hours, the things that really drive me, the things that I wake up and think about that get me out of bed in the morning. I can, I'm obsessed with it. And that's becoming obsessed and, and passionate about something almost gives you that freedom. Like, I'm going to do this by any means and I don't really care what so-and-so back home or so-and-so right here in front of my face thinks like I'm going to do what's best for me and what I think is right at the core and just kind of roll with it, you know, stick by your guns and yeah, just continue to evolve and become who you're supposed to be. Dude, absolutely. And, and I that potential. Go, say, go ahead say it again. And just fulfill and tap into that potential. Dude, yeah, I mean, I get the chills just talking about this and thinking about it, but like that, I think that's so true. Like, once you find yourself and find something you're passionate about, like, there's no, there's nobody like stopping you. There's nobody who's really like gonna get in your way. So that, that's really, really cool to see because that, that's just one of those things that like, no matter who you were back in the day, like that's kind of like everyone had a, a glimpse of that, like trying to please people and worrying so much. And 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 the truth is, people like our age even still do, and that's the sad <laughs> part. And, but I, I do think you're right. Like, I do think when you really like find yourself and find something that you enjoy, you start to definitely just, like you said, and I'm, you've said this before, just like put your blinders on, man. And just like, you just focus on yourself and, and that sort of thing. Yes, sir. No, I mean, we're, we're both in that process and I, I try to, to get further along. And, and like I said, like the theme um, of my coach's company is, earned endless endless relentless non-stop discipline and to be a better version of yourself so to be better each day and become better each day learn something new each day just do something that that gets you further to the point that where you want to be at dude i love that man i love that i mean it's it is really i mean it's so cool to see where you are now there's not many people who you know, that who personally, I still talk to from back then. And it's just because, you know, it's an energy thing, man. It's like, like the type of energy that, that you have and that, uh, you know, that I feel like I have, it's just, it's far, it's far and few between. And I just feel like, uh, I just feel like, man, it's, it's, uh, it's powerful shit. And that's why I really like wanted to get you on the podcast for a while. And who knew that like quarantine and figuring out that zoom is, is a thing is, was going to be the way to do it. Uh, yeah, but uh, so yeah, man, talk about like where you're at today, because obviously like you, dude, you're literally, I think it's fair to say you are like, it's a different life that you're living right now. Totally. Yeah. yeah, I'm still finding my way, man. I'm uh, yeah. so I've, I've lived here, it, like I came, I, so when I moved from rehab to sober living in, in California, that was right around Thanksgiving of 2017. So I'm coming up on a couple years here, I guess close to three years I've worked with my coach for two years um and so yeah I've been training progressively and so uh like what what you said earlier um like that spark when I found that spark where when I really found that spark was further along was when I did get going with my coach and that's where I kind of dieted down for the first time and like I didn't actually compete but I got to a like a, a subpar body fat that is yeah. really hard to achieve that a lot of people wouldn't even dream about doing um, other than people that participate in this sport, this lifestyle. Right. So that was the first time that I really dieted down and got to a point where we could see what my shape looked like and uh, then build up on top of that. But when I really saw myself like, you know, shredded abs, like veins, whatever, and for the first time, that's really, wow, like, I can actually, like, I did this, I achieved this, and, I mean, it's, as the more I put into it, the more I'm going to get out of it, and yeah. that's where I really became obsessed, so that was about halfway through that summer, that first summer, so summer of 2018 was when I really got into bodybuilding, and um, coming back home to visit at Christmas that year, and was 
I was. That's when I. That's like the rebirth. It was yeah. right after that. That's where I was like, okay, I'm a completely different person. It was like, yeah. I would have conversations and I just would be baffled of the words that were coming out of my mouth, <laughs> like, <laughs> compared to who I was before, figuring out who I was. And so, yeah, been bodybuilding for a couple of years. Um, with under the guidance of my coach, and you know, ever since I dieted down from that, that in 2018, I've kind of just been progressively building on top of that since so i mean in in the world of bodybuilding they call that an off season so i've kind of just been in off season since and hacking on lean tissue um growing and growing and growing just absolutely stuffing my face with food like a ridiculous amount of food like to the point where sometimes i'm having indigestion or even throwing up and um so bodybuilding, that's like, that's, I, I live and die by it. I mean, that's what's, uh, that underlying discipline that has helped me. It, it plays into other roles or parts of my life. So that, that goes into school, yeah. uh, work, everything. It all coincides with each other. And so just getting deeper into that was where I kind of found out the direction I was headed. So, I mean, getting deeper into that, I, that's when I went back to school work in easyology so i'm still i'm finishing that up yeah man we done this semester and i'll have my, my associate's degree um so i'm working on that been working on that bodybuilding and yeah just getting into finally personal training so coming to a point i mean that's what i was kind of getting ready to step into and i, I have I, I mean i've had i've i've been doing uh online clients and then you know, I was really just starting to get my in-person going, like right before all of this craziness hit. So, yeah, started training at a private facility, the same facility that I kind of like I grew up in, and trained in my coach, trained with my coach in. Um, so yeah, I've just been progressively growing in, in all all aspects of my life, um, school, training, and finally getting to a point where I'm monetizing that and, and turning it into a career. Bro, it's really cool to see because it's one of those things like, uh, you know, just see, like you t taking a step away from school, finding out, uh, you know, being almost like forced to, to find out what you enjoy. And now it's like you're just taking all the right steps, like you're doing the nutrition stuff, you're doing the training stuff, you're just you're, you're bodybuilding, which is a full time job on its own. And so you're just it's cool to see you really like just setting the foundations as you go, man. And I know you're still growing, but it's, it's cool for me to see just where you're at right now. Super cool, man. Like, I mean if people are listening, like I would encourage them to watch some of those. I mean, what would you say for people who don't understand just the level of dedication and discipline it takes to be a bodybuilder? What would you, what would you, um, if they could just watch like one thing, I mean, what would you say, man? Cause it's like me, me seeing it out there just, and, and from, from us talking, like I, I know that it's, it's another level. So what would you say to people, um, to give them an idea of what the bodybuilding lifestyle is like? Um, I mean, there's a lot of ways you can go. That's that's a tough question. Uh, it's there's certain personalities on Instagram that uh, like I mean, there's so many different kind of versions of bodybuilding. Almost in a sense, it's like the same thing at the end of the day, but there's different approaches and right, right. And super hardcore, and then there's uh, people that you know if it fits your macros and, mm -hmm. and just eating a, a certain amount of calories. Or then there's the guys that are like, okay, I'm gonna eat chicken and rice every single meal and train till my nose bleeds right so i mean there's certain people you can find on instagram like i i'm kind of uh finding my own way and yeah. figuring out where i lie and i mean i consider myself i guess pretty hardcore but um i mean i'm just very perfectionist and ocd about yeah. my diet um so i don't I, i'd probably say like like kind of the stuff that i watch like getting into bodybuilding like like I don't the there's a couple of documentaries on Netflix. I think it's um like the Generation Iron mm -hmm. films. Like they're that can like I that's not my go to source of information for bodybuilding. Like they're actually kind of become a joke on Instagram in a sense a little bit. But uh like those documentaries they follow and interview like real dudes, mm -hmm. real guys that are, you know, at the top of, of their craft within this sport. So I mean for somebody that doesn't know anything about bodybuilding, I would just go watch one of those. I mean, right. there's one like Pump and Iron back in the day. That's like the old school, I mean, Golden Era, like Arnold and Franco and all those guys. That's um, an older film. That's like kind of 
the first depiction of body. I would say probably watch that one. That's yeah. like the roots of bodybuilding, but like modern modern day bodybuilding would be like a good idea would be those generation iron films. Um, and yeah, just following certain people on Instagram. Like there's a, I mean, my coach, I'll name drop him. Like he, he is the ideal fitness professional. I mean, in terms of personal training, um, his own craft and, and pursuing bodybuilding, like he is just, he, he leads by example. And I've really just kind of been lucky enough to soak up and, and learn everything that I can from him. That, just that work ethic and that discipline. Um, so people like that, man. I mean, um, my coach, Kai Daly, if that's his name on Instagram, he, that's somebody that I model myself after and um, has really taught me everything. But there's plenty of body, but anyone who's anyone who lives in and breathes in sport is, is a good person to look for for information when it comes to bodybuilding and nutrition. But don't get it twisted. There's plenty of idiots out there. Yeah. A lot of idiots out there that, um, you just want to, and once you get deeper into it, you kind of, you're able to weed that out and find the, uh, the, just the, the good parts of it. But there's, there's a lot of false information out there and a lot of people that don't know what they're talking about as well. I mean, that's just in the fitness industry. Yeah. What, um, yeah, I was going to say, cause, cause for me, I knew absolutely nothing about it until I came and spent some time with you and then, you know, um, just from that and then doing like looking into it more like you just realize how how legit it is um so what's like the next big step for you for for bodybuilding like what's uh do you have any goals set for it or anything like that or are you kind of just uh taking it day by day right now taking it day by day man i mean i do have like long-term goals obviously of what i want to achieve but um you know that's and that's something i've really had to learn learn along the way too is i mean along with proper training and nutrition it's and the structure and discipline that comes along with that is uh is patience mm. i mean you know there's different like like i said before but i mean there's different so in the actual competition world of bodybuilding there are different categories so there's men's physique there's classic physique and then there's bodybuilding or that's like the men's and i mean there's all kinds of girl categories like bikini figure uh woman's physique and whatnot but uh like what i'm trying to do is bodybuilding so i mean for the amateur competitions that's you know, there's weight classes there's being my height uh, right around 511 under six foot um i have a frame to fill out man i've, I've put on and, and made a lot of progress and gained a lot of size but uh i'm still and i'm very hard on myself and i mean i've got um some really good guidance and you know we're, i'm not going to step on stage until i'm ready and yeah. not necessarily I, ready is a vague term is I'm not going to step on stage until I know I'm going to be competitive and can win a show. So um, whenever I feel that is, and obviously my coach, he, he calls the shots and yeah. you know, I would always bug him at the beginning of this. Like that's where I learned the patience is men's bodybuilding. That takes time. I mean, that, that takes time, food, training, just, honestly years so i mean i've been doing this for two years and that's really just that's the blink of an eye in uh the sense of bodybuilding i mean to be to really figure out or fulfill your full potential in, in your genetics i mean you, 10 15 years of training like so i mean that i'm obviously not going to wait 10 years to compete right. but um I, I mean i could have done one of the other categories like i mean there's plenty of people that train for a year and step on stage and do a men's physique show but um i have been very true to myself and what i want to do and what my goal is and that's open bodybuilding like i want to become a ifbb professional open bodybuilder but that's my long-term goal and that's going to take years that's going to take time that's what we're talking about but as far as stepping on stage uh, for the first time i would i would be a heavyweight um and then eventually potentially super heavyweight um, which is, you know, that's heavyweight will probably be my first show. That's um, anywhere from 200 to 225 pounds. I mean, bone shredded though on stage, so like yeah. muscle. So <laughs> you know, I'm I'm closer than I was, you know. So I think there's a lot of questions up in the air. Of, of shows aren't even going on right now. So I wasn't even planning to compete this spring, and that wasn't the goal anyway. But I don't know, like. Potentially next spring, 
would be when we started talking about it. Really, I'm taking it day by day. You know, I'm still growing, growing like a weed. So just continue to to pack that on and and stay relatively lean. And you know, it's it's a it's a process back and forth, like gaining, 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 right. eating, getting a little fluffy, putting on a little fat, and and then tightening back up and just progressively looking better at a weight. So um, probably probably start talking about shows and in the fall or spring, like we'll start putting a plan in action, but yeah, I want to, I want to come out of nowhere, man. I want to, I want to step up there and, and be like, Oh, who's that guy? Like, yeah. Yeah. So I, I want to make a statement and um, put something up there that myself and my coach will, will be proud of. And so, I mean, like, and that's the thing too, is you learn patience, but for the dudes that really like live and die by this and, and love the sport, it's like we get up and do our best every single day. So yeah. I, it's you know discipline motivation leaves but discipline stays and I mean I'm I always get my meals in I don't remember the last time I missed a meal um and I'm just going to keep doing that until I am ready so it, it, but like timeline it'd probably be like another eight, eight to 12 months before I actually do my first show and I mean I'll be pretty advanced by that point like um and then just from there I mean I'm putting in the time now so uh, when I do get to that point, it's I'll, I'll be doing shows. I mean, and then the goal after that eventually, like that's way down the line, but talking about national shows and that's where you qualify and that's when you start, you know, doing the big boy shows and uh, potentially, you know, five, six years from now, like competing to go pro. Yeah. Dude, it's cool. And, and it's really cool that you're being patient with it. And it's, I think it's cool because you love the process. You're not worried about rushing into it. You know what I mean? I feel like, uh, that's how you know, and, and just knowing you, that's how you know you're going to have so much longevity and, and do this forever is because, like, you're just as in love with the process as actually the competition. And so um, it, it's cool that you're not putting a timetable on that because it, it's inevitable, bro. You're putting your fucking mind to it. It's going to happen. So, Yeah, that's that's my take on it, man. It's like, again, I'm passionate about it. It's, uh, I'd be doing this regardless. Like, I'm always, like, even when I'm 50, 60 years old, like, I might not be dieting to get on stage, but I'm always going to live by structure and uh, I will always train and, you know, just eating good meals like that. That's just the lifestyle that, that is bodybuilding. And yeah. So I'd be doing it regardless. And, you know, eventually I, in the sh short term future, it, honestly, my, my biggest goal right now is bodybuilding is very expensive. <laughs> um, you know, grocery trips, supplements, everything else. And uh, actually even like the MPC and, and starting to compete in those shows, like it's it, the tan, um, staying in hotels, like membership card, it, it, it all adds up. So I, my really my goal right now is, is to become uh, financially stable. Mm. I mean, California is expensive. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure you remember when you came to visit. Yeah. So it's uh, just being in a place where I'm financially stable, where I don't have to stress and I'll be able to uh, freely compete and, and not be worried about, you know, I don't have enough money to go get groceries or I can't pay for this. Or, so once I'm in a spot where I'm financially stable and by that point, you know, visit again, it, it all works in conjunction. I mean, I'll have my degree by that point and um, hopefully farther along with, well, we'll be farther along with my, with my PT and my online and just training business. And, you know, I can start having those conversations. Exactly. That's it's just exciting, bro. Um, it'll be cool to just just keep watching you evolve. Um, but uh, let's see. I got I got I'm low on battery, so I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, we'll we'll wrap up with the final question I like to do. Um, so last thing to wrap up, um, I just wanted to do if you could give people one piece of advice, like like you've had a crazy crazy journey, man. So like if if you could give people just one major thing of advice that maybe you haven't mentioned yet. Um, something to stick with people that's really stuck with you, what would that be? Uh, kind of what we were saying before, like that's what I did right as my point, it's, is to be yourself. Um, be yourself, don't do it for the approval of others, and like whatever it is that you do, man, I mean, if it's, uh, if it's swimming, if it's, if it's like going to, I don't know, like, fishing whatever it is man just just become obsessed be passionate about it and stick by your guns go go hard with it um 
and live unforgivingly and do do what you love. You know? I love it, man. And that that's why I really wanted to have you on, man. It goes it goes with powerful one, bro. It's like you gotta be you gotta be fucking powerful in yourself. You gotta love yourself, man, and, and everything else is, is a breeze. So You did it. You made it to the end of the episode. Thank you guys so much for listening or watching the podcast. Be sure to go like it, subscribe, share, all that stuff that you're supposed to say at the end of the podcast. Thank you guys again and stay tuned every Thursday, powerfulone.com slash podcast or on the Instagram page at powerful zero and E powerful one. Thank you guys again. And again, last thing, if you guys are interested in being on the podcast, hit me up. If you got a cool story and feel like you really fit, uh, you know, the, the mold for powerful one, hit me up. We'll get you on the podcast. Thank you guys. Stay safe.